Romance at a glance. Uh huh. Romance at a glance. What you say? Romance at a glance. Go ahead, girl. Welcome to Romance at a Glance post Thanksgiving feast. I'm your host, Bridget. This is my co host, Shawnee. What up, Shawnee? Bridget, I am so full. I don't think there's any leftovers from my do nothing Thanksgiving <laughs> holiday. <laughs> I'm ready to like sit on the couch and like get my phone and get ready to shop small businesses. Yes. Okay, my goal is to completely support small businesses this holiday season. Heck yeah. Well, tomorrow is Small Business Saturday. And as you guys know, we are a small business. So if you would like to support Romance at a Glance, you can do that in a few ways. Shani, tell them about the gorgeous, awesome, fun coloring book that you made. Oh my goodness. Okay, so I just made the cutest chibi coloring book. If you don't know what chibis are, they're these like tiny little big-headed anime characters. Um, If you look at our logo, we're little chibis. I did a holidays of the year coloring book with chibis from like all different cultures, all different uh, backgrounds and everything like that. It's super diverse, which I love, of course. Um, You know, Bridget and I are equal opportunity uh, people. Yes, we are. (laughs) I don't know. I spent a lot of time, a lot of stress making it. And I think it's beautiful. And I'm so excited. I'm so excited to get it into y'all's hands. And uh, yeah, so. Guys, it is the cutest thing of all time. It is the cutest thing. I want to give Shawnee so many props because we came up with this idea two weeks ago. And we were chatting and I we had been talking about doing a coloring book for like a year. And I was like, oh, coloring. And then finally we were just sitting there and I was like, you know what? Let's just map it up right now and just get it all on paper. And then... We did, and Shawnee immediately took that, talked to the artist who designs our chibis, and gave her all these incredible mock-ups. And it is, when I say it's like the cutest thing, when you guys see the front cover, you're going to lose your minds. It's me and Shawnee laying in a field of flowers holding hands while books all around us, and it makes me want to cry. It's so cute. And (laughs) Shawnee designed me my ideal book room where I'm laying on a window bench, Uh, reading books with books all around me and built-ins and that's like my ideal future life you guys and I love it so much I'm gonna buy it for my kids because it is kid friendly I'm gonna buy it for my friends who like the color get it get it so you can go to our instagram dot com forward slash romance at a glance and you can find us and there will be links to the coloring book there you can also head to the website romance at a glance and it will be on the front cover and also there will be a link in the show notes that you are currently listening to so if you go on your phone you can click a link and check out that coloring book and support the small business that is romance at a glance and get some christmas presents for your friends or yourself that's what i'm saying support us we are your home girls okay we out here in these streets trying to make this dollar so we can keep this podcast going yeah okay don't leave us out here in the cold don't leave us out in the cold <laughs> another way you can support the <laughs> podcast is going to patreon.com forward slash romance at a glance getting yourself some cool perks and becoming our friends as well as if you do not have the dollars this season we completely understand you can also support the show by writing a review super important for us to climb up those charts or and or share the show Uh, Send it to some friends, send it to your book club, post it on Goodreads, post it on Instagram and get the word out. Oh, Bridget. Yeah. Guess what? What? We have a new patron. Patron love. Patron love. Yeah. Okay. Get it, get it, get it. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So we have a new patron. Welcome to the family, Annette. Annette, we go way back. Okay. Way back. Uh, OG. Way OG because she has been with us uh, through our Black Dagger Brotherhood season, which was like season two. Yeah. Okay. She runs an awesome Instagram called the B Dagger B. And if you don't know, now you know, go check it out. Yes. Uh, but we are like so happy to have you. I was very excited. You don't understand. Every time we get a new patron, just in general, Bridget and I happy dance. Get so. F- we do happy dances. Happy dance. Okay, because that means we can keep doing the podcast for another day. So, Annette, we love you. And are going to be doing a live stream with you this upcoming Monday on the 30th of November because A Warm Heart in Winter comes out on December 1st, which is the new J.R. Ward Black Dagger Brotherhood book. And so we're going to live stream and talk to Annette all about our hopes and dreams for that book. So our Black Dagger Brotherhood fans out there, Come to Instagram at 1 p.m. P 
PST on November 30th for a live stream. Oh, yes. I'm excited for that. Let's yeah. do that. I'm excited. You All know right. why I'm excited? Because we were supposed to talk to her in like April <laughs> about like take her brotherhood. I just like COVID just crushed my soul and I just like could not get my act together and like get on the live stream at the right time. So it didn't happen. And I really appreciate you for bringing it on home before a warm heart in winter comes out. That it should be really fun. That's going to be super fun. I'm very excited for this. Also, just as a last thing, get in on Patreon. We are going to be watching the Bridgertons yeah. with our patrons Hell yeah. in December. Yes. So uh, if you want to be a part of that, please head over to Patreon because uh, that's where we get really nasty. And that's where I put all the stuff that doesn't make the show. Yes. St- stuff I don't want my mama to hear. <laughs> All right, Bridget, are you ready to get into this episode? I'm ready to talk about Work For It by Talia Hibbert. Let's get it popping. Okay, everyone, welcome back. It is going to be a fun one. Work For It, Talia Hibbert. This is one of her self-published novels. If you guys have been reading The Brown Sisters, Get a Life, Chloe Brown, Take a Hint, Danny Brown, lately those are traditionally published, but she has quite a backlist of self-published books, and this is one of them. It is a part of the Just For Him series, book number four, contemporary romance, male, male romance, queer romance. Shani, tell me about the audio. Okay, so this is actually the first time where I've had like very, very, very strong feelings about the audio. Tell the people the feelings. There were two people. There was Shane East, who I actually hear a lot in other books. Um, And he works with a lot of these other pairings and these like male, male, females and and, uh, books and menages and whatever. Shane East, A dream. Beautiful. Love his voice. Always kills. Always, like, amazing. Now, Chance Thoreau is a new narrator that I've never heard of before. Um, Terrible. I could not. Which character did he do? uh, He did Olu. 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 Or whatever. And when I say it took me so far out of the book from, like. Well, and he's the beginning character, too. He's the very beginning. When the audio started, I was like, oh, no. Oh no. oh, no. And it was weird because his audio started. And I mean, I rewound the first chapter probably at least like six times to okay. try to like ingest it better um, because his narration just, I don't, I don't know how to describe it. First of all, he sounded very ominously a villain. <laughs> 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 and then there was at just some points like I couldn't quite understand always what he was saying. It wasn't that he, I don't know how to explain it. Maybe it's just... I don't know, the way he was speaking or whatnot, but there was just moments where I was like, wait, what? Like, what? What? And it's not the British accent. I listened to a lot of things with accents and that sort of thing. It just, it just didn't, he just didn't do it for me. And then um, the worst part of him doing the accent was that like Shane East does Griffin um, and Olu really well, but then it would switch to, uh, all those chants, and he would be doing, and he would be doing Griffin, and he made Griffin sound like this weird, gruff. Uh, oh, that's so strange. Uh, okay, so terrible. each narrator did the point of view. So they did not only the point of view, but they also did the dialogue within that section mm-hmm. versus them always doing the dialogue throughout the whole book. Yeah. So when it oh, was, oh, I don't think I would have liked that no, at all. I, I mean, when I say I viscerally hated it, I. Did not like it whatsoever. I honestly think that the narration of this book killed a lot of the whatever I like in this book. What you would have liked. Yeah, what I would have liked. I don't know because I had to rewind so much. And then he would do Griffin's voice like. (laughs) And I was like, what? Does Griffin sound like that? He sounds like a sweet, cuddly bear when Shane does this. And that's his personality. Why didn't they just have Shane do the whole book? They should have. Abso- absolutely. I don't know why, because a lot of these um, authors, when they do these first person, whatever, mm-hmm. it became popular for them to have different narrators for different things. And I don't, I only need one good narrator. Like, I don't quite well, understand why, why there are so many plus different. Plus, if you're like, okay, so for me, if I was going to listen to something and it was first person, I could see switching the first person for the internal dialogue, but I would still want all the actual dialogue to be both people in each section. So at least you're still always getting out loud the right person's voice. I would have liked that in this 
book because I've read a lot of books where where if it's say it's a girl guy, which is easier to tell, the female narrator will also read the male lines in her voice or whatever. Um, and so it does happen, but, and they're not my favorite in general. I do I don't mind two narrations, but I like when the they keep their same voice. Um, but this one, he was just bad in general. So you had a, a reference for Griffin's voice that was really nice and smooth and sweet and just mm, yummy. And then this guy came in and took a shed on it. Oh, no. <laughs> like, and I, I, I actually was going through the reviews and I picked like a, a couple reviews because of this. So uh, one of them said, I listened to the audio version of this book. And it was narrated by Shane East and Chance Thoreau. I absolutely loved Shane West. Oh, sorry. Shane West, West East, sorry. I absolutely love Shane East's narration and accent. He did an amazing job voicing Griffin. Chance is a new to me narrator and he did a good job, but something about him narrating Keen's didn't quite work for me. I'm not sure if it was the accent or his tone, but at times his chapters took me out of the story. It's one of those books I would rather have read than listened to. Mm. And that's, I was like, okay, so it's not just me. Like there was a bunch of reviews that were like this. Gotcha. Like it's kind of hard for me to gauge the book fully oh. because I feel like the narration was just like, mm. wah, wah. yeah. Okay. Well, hopefully most of the sexy times were while Shane was reading. <laughs> so you could at least enjoy those. Uh, well, what did you think about the cover art? Well, I mean, Bridget is a hot dude with back muscles. <laughs> Like and his flexing. hands are flexing. His hands are behind his back, so mm-hmm. it's flexed. In a out. field of flowers, mm-hmm. looking Daisies. down with a beard. Uh huh. Mm. He's so tan though that so tan. at some point I said, "Bridget, is this man black?" <laughs> I know, and I was like, "No, I don't think." I think so. he's, he's just very just a tan, tan white man. It's a tan white. The the other character is black. Though. Yes, you know, but but it, but it was funny when I when I saw it. I was like, "Wait a minute!" Um, but beautiful. I mean, beautiful. It's hot tendons, rippling yeah. muscles, forearm and muscles are popping, and daisies. Yeah. I got it. I yeah. got what the book is about. Mm-hmm. I'm but, into it. Yeah. Honestly, that I mean, the description got me too. But I'm not gonna lie, the cover drew me in. Yeah, because I knew I had to do Talia Hibbert, and I was like, this cover. Yes, this cover's working for me. <laughs> it's working. Okay, let me give you a quick synopsis. All right. Okay, quick note first. Content warning. This book does include depression, anxiety, references to past sexual trauma and forced outing, as well as references to a parent who died. By suicide. So just keep that in mind. One thing I really like about Talia's books before we get into this is that all at the front of all of her books, she puts a content note about what her books are about. And everyone always gets a happily ever after. Everyone always has like a wonderful experience in her books. Um, you know, with some miscommunications, obviously, but you know, everyone, there's never any like they reference all of these things, but there's never any like meanness towards them yeah. or at least in the books of hers I've read so far yeah and I really appreciate that she puts the content note right up front so you just like know what you're getting into you know like oh if maybe this isn't my I don't want to read a book maybe that has depression and anxiety in it today you can set it aside for tomorrow and come back to it yeah and I think that's great about her yeah anybody who listens to this show knows that we support content warning yes we do yeah so work for it is a hot angsty male male romance featuring a cynical city boy although he's not really a boy he's 38 years old (laughs) and he was forced out of the closet by his previous boyfriend who then tried to blackmail his sister and their very uptight rich english family kicked them both out of the family because he was forced out of the closet and he stayed in the closet to protect his little sister and raise her as his own um, and kind of protect her from his parents who are terrible people and he kind of when he goes through his bouts of depression and anxiety and feels really like out of his own body, he sort of escapes his life and goes on these trips and he's not up for a big trip. So he finds a small trip into the countryside where he meets Griffin, a soft hearted farmer Mm. who's a big, big man. He's a big man. Yeah. Big man. man. Yeah. And he grows all these flowers and cordials and peppers and he makes all these recipes and there is a festival picking flowers for the cordial. And that is what Alu goes for. And that is how they meet. And that's a that's a synopsis. That's a synopsis. <laughs> that's a synopsis. I okay, so I know you said that you had trouble getting into the narrator's voice. And I will say that the beginning chapter of the book was hard to get into in general, yeah. reading it. Um, it is from Alu's point of view. He is it's him at a club at the very beginning of the book, and he is severely depressed. And 
very out of his own body. So he's going there in the hopes that he can find someone and he won't like be jarred out of everything and he won't feel like disgust with himself about like trusting the guy who outed him and he won't uh, like he'll be able to go through with it and take, you know, joy out of sex again and he'll sort of reclaim his body and reclaim his own sort of self. And it does not work. Spoiler. That's why he goes to the country to meet (laughs) Griffin. Does not work. But I will say because it is in his mind and it's first person and he is very lost in his mind. It is a hard chapter to read or two chapters or whatever it is. So it was hard to get into his voice and it was hard to get into the story. I think the story really does pick up when we get to the small town and they meet. Yeah. And that's like really when the story started to pick up for me. Yeah. I mean, I I definitely know like the narration was hard, but I also was like, this guy really is in his head Mm -hmm. and like... I don't know if the if Talia's intention was for that chapter to be hard mm-hmm. because in anxiety and depression is hard. Mm-hmm. And the way I felt reading that chapter is the way I feel when I have anxiety and depression where I'm stuck in my mind and going looping and whatever, mm-hmm. you know, whatever that is. So I don't know if it was intentional or not, but definitely was frustrating as a reader to get through the before he gets to the to the farm, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, I agree. I think it was, I think it was, yeah, I think frustrating is a good way to think of it. Because we were like, well, but when is the story going to kind of start? Um, I do think contextually for his character, it really helped with his arc. Like how, because I think it's one thing for a character to say like, oh, I have been depressed or I am depressed. And it's quite another to spend two chapters in their mind where you're like, What's going on? Get out of this. Come on. (laughs) Come on. Be happy, you know? And then slow, like, I thought she did a really, really good job of him slowly, 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 like, you know, like, touching Griffin's hand and not being freaked out and being like, oh, my God, I'm not freaked out. Like, okay, I better go before, like, something bad. Like, I better go before I ruin it and not, like, it was definitely a slow burn Maybe not the whole book because they bang a lot, but like the first half of the book was really a slow burn of like him very slowly, each touch, each interaction, each time Griffin respects his boundaries and and realizes that he's in pain and that he needs maybe like some, you know, like very, very slow um, approaching in terms of like the emotions and the physicalness. I thought it was done really well. Yeah, it was, um, I like the slow burn of the story Mm -hmm. because, and I think Talia kind of hints at it, every time that Olu kind of thinks things are going to be kind of like, what I think could be considered very stereotypical of like gay couples, which is like, oh, that everything is hypersexualized and like um, there's not this intimacy or people just want to fuck, you Mm -hmm. know? And you kind of get that Olu is kind of skeptical every time something happens when he's like, oh, like you want to hold my hand, especially because you know, like, he's like described as being so handsome yeah. and so beautiful, and like so he's like, well, that's what everyone does want from me because I'm so good looking. Yeah, you know, so it was very sweet. I like the slow burn of it all. And it's mm-hmm. like, no, oh, these are in complicated individuals, and that I like that their love story um, was. Uh, yeah, I like. I really like that it wasn't rushed, and I do really like that. Um, they are very vulnerable. There's certain points where you're like, oof, the vulnerability is like, you could, it's like palpable. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you're just like, that's hard. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? And so, yeah, that was, that was a very good um, aspect to the book for me. Did you like Bex? His, uh, yeah, of course. Bex is Rebecca, who is best friends with Griffin. And they're described as being like, you know, joined at the hip as, from children onwards. And I just thought she was hysterical. <laughs> like all her little like, let's go spy. And then she's like, knocks on the door and she's like, we're here to spy. Yeah. And it's like, clearly she just can't spy. She doesn't want to say it. Oh, but I, one of, I had so many funny quotes and good quotes in this book. But she said um, when she first sees Olu, she goes, everyone said he's handsome, but this is just silly. <laughs> like, <laughs> like he's just too handsome. And Griffin is just like described as being ugly and yeah. not handsome. And I actually found that really refreshing because 
in most romance novels that I read, everyone is so attractive. So attractive. And even if they're like, oh, maybe one of the main characters is overweight, they're still really attractive and overweight. Yeah. Or one of the characters is like, has a funny nose, but it gives them a rakish charm or whatever the case may be. And I actually found it really nice that he's described as being like, just too big for this world, too tall, <laughs> too brawny. His face is too, like, just doesn't, not attractive. Yeah. But it's like his, you know, all who falls in love with like his manner and his gentleness and yeah. his calmness and like the way he treats him. I thought that was nice. It's a good compliment to like for each other, right? Mm-hmm. Because um, even in that interaction where Olu's trying to tell Griffin, like, hey, your boss is undervaluing you, mm-hmm. like, you should be getting more and that sort of thing. And like Olu is more of that brass, like big mouth, like go get whatever. And Griffin is not that. So they're a good like yin and yang, mm-hmm. you know, for each other. Mm-hmm. And I have, there's part of like something I found in re- in relationships that when you have a partner who is vulnerable in a certain way, when you know that, that they are insecure about certain things, um, it's just always good to, help reinforce in a positive way against whatever that thing is you know. And you it never needs to be said. That's the the cool thing. Like you, when you know your partner, you know the things that they're insecure about. And so you just make it a point to start actively hitting back, like reinforcing a, a positive of that thing. And you can see a difference. And I feel like that kind of happens mm-hmm. with Olu and Griffin. Yeah, Olu like, talks about how he knows Griffin's very socially awkward. And so he just slides in to cover his social awkwardness and like carry the conversation and like be that person for him while Griffin like thinks through what his response will be. And I thought, I honestly thought this book, okay, the sex scenes are steamy. We're going to get to those, you guys. Oh, but yeah. in general, I thought this book was very sweet. Yeah. Like tug on your heartstrings. Like you're like, oh my God, you guys <laughs> be together and be happy. Well, Griffin, Griffin really for me, got me. Oh really, my god, like, he got, he got like me. really got under my skin because I was like, oh my. He was goodness, so Tony. patient mm-hmm. and so like, like he was so scared that like Olu wouldn't like him because he's just like a simple guy from the country and like, uh, you know, Olu is so fancy and he's a writer and all these other things and he's too good for him and he's too handsome and and he was like so in his head about it, but he also was like, I like you. And I think you're great just the way you are. And it's okay that you have depression. Like, I still like you. I'm not going to just leave you. It's okay. And, you know, like, I want to just hold your hand. Like, I just want to be with you. I just want to, you know, uh, towards the, I mean, skipping ahead, but towards the end of the book, um, or maybe not the end, maybe like 75% through, um, Olu is like, vacation is over. He's been there a few weeks and he's going back to London. And Griffin's like, oh, wait, you can't, of course you can't stay in this little town. It's too small for you. Of course. Oh, okay. Well, I'll just go back to London with you. <laughs> and all is like, I, I'm i trying to leave you. You can't come with me. Like, cause you can't, like you need to grow things and be near the earth. You can't be in London in my sterile apartment. Like, yeah. I don't want that for you either. And they're just lovely. <laughs> they're just lovely, Shawnee. This was a lovely book. I feel like, so... Again, I mean, the book for me was hard to get into. I think overall, like, so I liked Griffin and, you know, Olu drove me a bit crazy. Mm. Um, But, I mean, there was a lot of, like, DNF moments for me in this book, like, where I did not want to finish the book. Like, first off, just in the first two chapters, I was like, dear God. (laughs) Just help me get through this book or whatever. Um, I'm glad that I kept, re- like, obviously it's for the podcast, so I have to keep reading. But mm-hmm. if, if even if I hadn't had to read it for a po- the podcast, I'm glad that I kept reading mm-hmm. uh, because it did pick up um, and get better. Um, I never really connected with Olu. Mm-hmm. And I, I tried to and I wanted to, um, but I just didn't. You know, Griffin really got me and I was I really wanted their love story to work and the sex scenes were hot as fuck and mm-hmm. those always connected. I'm the way. <laughs> Tali, you nasty, you yeah. so, you nasty. <laughs> um and uh but like at the end of the day though the I I found that it was a lot of angst 
for me. It was a lot of angst. It was a whole lot of angst. A lot and of it, internal angst. Yeah. And, and I'm not saying that grown adults don't have that sort of angst and anxiety about things and whatever. And it was interesting to see that most of their conflict was internal, mm-hmm. like all in their heads mm-hmm. going back and forth on things. It, that kind of, it just kind of bored me after mm-hmm. a while. I was just kind of like, okay, guys, get it together. Let's, what are we going to do here? What's going to, you know, like, um, and that was a thing I, I thought it, I would, I hoped it would move a little bit faster in that regard. I'm not saying take away the whole slow burn, but the whole like inner monologue of stuff just made it, I don't know. It just, I kept checking out of the book and when I keep checking out and it means I'm just not interested mm. in your love story or whatever. Mm-hmm. So, and then I just kept kind of wanting to skip like ahead. And that's always a, not a good sign of like, <laughs> no, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> when you read a book, like, let's go, let's go. Let's, uh, okay. Let's give a, skip a chapter and then hopefully they'll be in a better place or, mm-hmm. you know, so I did find that, um, to be a little bit like, ee. um, yeah, it was, it was a whole lot of angst. It was definitely a lot of things, which usually I am not for the sort of back and forth as much. But I actually, I think maybe because the context of it being like starting off with his depression and, and anxiety and that being such a big part of the journey. Yeah. I actually really enjoyed the like nuances and the slow steps and the like, like them both internally like just like spinning and spinning and spinning and the other person just like grabbing their hand and they're like, Oh, okay. Everything's okay. Like yeah. I, Oh, okay. And like the, I thought the reassuring, the reassurance that they were making to themselves in their brain, like, Oh no, that was, Nope. I don't think those thoughts anymore. Actually, we're going to stay on the positive train. Like those thoughts aren't serving me. And like, yeah, all who starts to take his medicine and um, his antidepressants and, I do think you have to be, let me just tell you. It's to be in readers, the mood. You have to be in the mood for this for book. For sure. I think you for sure have to be yeah. in the mood for this book. Because it is steamy in the steamy parts. But it is also very much a slow burn relationship. Yeah. Like one step at a time. Like very, very sweet. Um, but also it is heavy. Very sweet, but very heavy. It's, it's very heavy. And like one of the things that, you know, I... I was talking to Bridget about earlier is that like me personally, I have, I have spent this whole entire year because of medical stuff feeling in and out of my body. Mm -hmm. So I understand the concept of Olu where he's like, I don't feel anything. Mm -hmm. And it feels very strange because you're like, Oh, I see something that I really like. Look, there's a cute kitten. And you're like, I could care less. Someone Mm -hmm. could probably kick this kitten across the room and I would feel nothing. Mm -hmm. And that's a crazy feeling, you know? And so like, I, so I really wanted to love this book. Like I s- set out being like, okay, let's go. Like, you know, mm-hmm. and then we met um, Talia, lovely, lovely person. Um, and so like, you know, my body's like rooting for it, you know? And so I, I had hoped, you know, that this would be a book I love, but I think that you definitely have to be in the mindset for the subject matter of this book, the romance of it, the love of it, the heaviness of it, um, that sort of thing. If you're looking for a light jaunt, (laughs) this is not the book for you. Not a light jaunt. (laughs) Not a light, sexy jaunt like a lot of our other books this season. This is is definitely still steamy, but not light. Yeah, you know? And for me, I mean, it hit a little close to home. (laughs) 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 Uh, So, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I'm a little bit conflicted as to why I didn't get so into this book. Like, you know, if it was the na- the narration, if it was that it was so angsty for, you know, or whatever. Mm-hmm. And um, there were moments that I really liked and Griff and I really did, you know, but like overall I was like, just like whelmed. Whelmed? Not, <laughs> not overwhelmed. overwhelmed. Not, not underwhelmed. underwhelmed. Just, just whelmed. whelmed. <laughs> It's a great movie reference quote. I'm proud of you. It's not. A, I just made that up right now. I don't know what movie you're talking about. <laughs> Ten things I hate about you. Is it in there? Yeah, Gabrielle Union says I can be overwhelmed and I can be underwhelmed, but can you ever just be whelmed? Oh my god! Well, I'm so glad you thought I was that clever. <laughs> I was just whelmed. <laughs> Hilarious. Okay, you guys. I think this is gonna kind of be a short review today. We have a bunch of quotes, so. Let's take a quick break and we'll come back with our ratings and our quotes. Hello, best friends. Thank you for being loyal listeners of Romance at a Glance. We're so happy to have you. 
If you'd like to support us further, head over to Patreon, where you can become one of our patrons. We've got a lot of great perks, such as merch and a super secret discussion group where Bridget and I talk to you directly about all things romance and all things nasty. So come on over. And now, back to our show. So let's start with Alu. What did you think about Alu? I gave Alu a three. Okay. Um, I understand, like, the the attachment that he had and that he was going through all the stress and anxiety. Um, But hearing about it for so long in the book just it made that shit boring for me. Like, it was just like, yo, man, I need you to get into therapy and I need this. He did at the end. <laughs> yeah, he did. But like the whole way around. The I family know. therapy comment with his sister was pretty funny. Yeah. <laughs> and she's like, it sounds bearable, darling. If we, if we must. <laughs> if we must. I was like, oh, so yeah. posh people are so funny. <laughs> but like, uh, so I gave him a three because he kept gaining and losing. Mm-hmm. And then I settled at a, at a three for him. Um, I did like the growth by the end of the story. Like, if I just think of this in a tactical way, um, he did grow. Mm-hmm. He was, he broke up with Griffin. He went away, but then he was like, I done fucked up. And then he went back. I did like that there wasn't this uh, huge to do when he went back and apologized. It wasn't like, like Griffin was like, okay, I accept. okay. Like, I hear you. I accept. <laughs> let's, let's be together again. Yeah. You know, please don't leave me. <laughs> yeah. It didn't, there was no forced like blow up or whatever. It was like, you know, oh, I see the person I love coming humbly and saying, like, I done fucked up. Mm-hmm. And to me, that's literally the only thing I ever need someone to say when they apologize to me is like acknowledgement. Like my apology language is acknowledgement of wrongdoing, wrongdoing, you know. So I like that. I was like, he came. He was like, you know, hear me out. <laughs> done fucked up. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, yeah, so I gave him a three. He, he, he kept going back and forth. What do you think? I gave him a four. It did take me a minute to get into him because she wrote his detachment very well. But I liked like how sweetly surprised he was by Griff. And he was pretty dirty in bed, which I like. He was nasty. He was nasty. Oh, we didn't talk about the six. Well, I have like five quotes. So I thought we'd talk about it in this section. (laughs) (laughs) You're so nasty, Bridget. (laughs) And... um. And I liked, again, that his arc, that he grew. And I thought his relationship with, like, his sister was, I liked, like, I felt more connected to him than you did. Yeah. I would hazard a guess it's because, like, you hated the narrator so much. His so voice you, was terrible. <laughs> so you might have felt slightly more connected with him if you weren't, like, not excited at all when his scenes well, came up. every time he talked, he sounded like a villain. Yeah. But he didn't sound like a villain in my mind. Yeah. He just sounded like someone who was posh but also like brash but covering like a really wounded interior yeah and how griffin like saw through that and like sort of coaxed him back to life so i gave him a four i liked him i knew you would knew you 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 gave griffin a five didn't you of course i did (laughs) of course i did i'm not a savage creature (laughs) obviously he needed to have a five he is so warm and I just wrote my notes just say what's not to love I mean that's it what's not to love a man can fuck the man can get fucked Oof. that man can't grow things you know I like people who grow things and they had Vaseline I just they want to say that Vaseline. they had Vaseline they had lube he was like we gonna they do had, why it was Vaseline yeah they had a lot of different they had a lot of different kinds of lubricants mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. they spent a lot of time in graphic description on mm-hmm. like getting ready to have sex which mm-hmm. I appreciated I have a bunch of quotes you guys I'm about to read them I no, I he was like I mean he's like the ultimate giant marshmallow lovable like he was so like he had his own you know his mom committed suicide when he was eighteen no one in town liked him because him and his mom were already kind of like witchy people who would go in the woods and like grow things <laughs> and you know and he's very like you know slow to talk and kind of yeah. gruff and enormous and so people in the town already sort of don't talk to him and kind of avoid him except for Bex so he's living this very lonely existence. And I liked that Alu also brought the best out in him and made him realize, like, oh, he deserves more and he wants more. Yeah. So what did you give him? You gave him a four? I gave him a four. Oh, I said... Shawnee has no heart, you guys. Big sweetheart, actually. Shani has <laughs> no heart. I refuse to be friends with her after this. This podcast is ending today. <laughs> We're not talking for the next two minutes. For the next <laughs> five seconds while she seconds. finishes and then I'll talk again. <laughs> 
<laughs> um, I yeah, I definitely gave him a four. Uh, obviously, because I felt more for him than I did for uh, Alu. Um, I thought it was a big sweetheart, a big teddy bear. You know what I mean? Like, I there's a, some points where I was annoyed by Griffin. I was like, "Come on, buddy! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Come on, yeah, buddy! Come on, buddy! You can do it!" <laughs> um, do it. But he was very human, um, which I really liked uh, about the character. Very, they were both very flawed in that the fact that these are two men, and generally men are not allowed to feel these emotions. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And even in writing, I don't think they um, authors really give men. Uh, credit for feeling stress and anxiety and depression Mm -hmm. and things like that. I don't know if I would want to, again, read a book that was so heavily weighted in anxiety and depression, because again, I read romance to escape anxiety and depression. Sure. (laughs) So that's just a personal choice. Um, But it was cool to have read it because I am seeking deeper stories and more meaningful stories in my romance. I Mm -hmm. found that that's kind of been a running theme. Um, Books that I'm not really enjoying tend to be a little bit more vapid. Mm -hmm. Um, So I do like that she attempted that. Mm -hmm. I do think, like, I'm giving her points just for fucking attempting that shit. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, I gave Griffin a four. Big sweetheart. Now, I want to know what you rated the book. Well, first, I want to know your McDreamy, McSteamy. I said they were a McSteamy in the sheets. Oh, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) They're McDreamies in the the streets, but... In the sheets, they're mixed I, I agree to this. I yeah. agree to this. I like this. <laughs> yeah. They were... I said McSteamy mix, McSteamersons. Mix yeah. <laughs> yeah. They were burning... Once they got to the got to the getting, they were burning it down. Now, do you think they're vanilla, kinky? I mean, I think it was vanilla. It's just that they're gay. So... Yeah. But I don't... I don't I see any... Was, I, didn't, I didn't see anything in there that was kinky. Yeah, I thought I it was vanilla. I think they're just gay. Yeah. Which I don't think. I mean, not in like a bad way. That's, I'm not really saying they're just <laughs> they're gay. Just I mean, gay. <laughs> it's just vanilla gay sex. Yeah, I thought it's it was not just, kinky yeah. gay sex. Yeah, it's just uh, to me. I was like, oh, this is vanilla. It's vanilla, but it was really well done and very graphic. Very which I graphic. Thank you. And also, I appreciated that after this, because a lot of books, I feel like having such a slow, sweet burn would have slow, sweet sex. And I appreciated that, like when they got to that point, and Griffin was like are you okay? Is this still okay? Like, are you, you know, like, cause he, yeah. you know, has obviously been out of his body and like, you know, like their first time they kissed or were about to kiss. Olu was like shaking and Griffin was like, Whoa, I'm not going to kiss you. Like you're clearly freaking out. Yeah. <laughs> um, but once they were both like, yeah, let's do this. It was on like Donkey Kong. <laughs> like Donkey Kong. <laughs> he was like, Oh, thank God I've had a boner for a week. <laughs> yeah. That was hot. That shit was hot. <laughs> And I like that they both switched, which I know is not always the case in gay relationships. Um, but I thought it was cool because Olu said, like, I don't care whether I'm on top or bottom ever. Yeah. And Griffin's like, well, no one's ever asked to have sex with me in that way. But yeah, I'm down. Let's try it. Let's try it. <laughs> and you always just got to try it. You know, if your partner and wants to try it, just like maybe try it, see how it feels. And he loved it. And he loved it. He loved it. And I was like, yes, get you some. Get you some. Okay, you guys, I'm going to read you some sexy, sexy quotes because oh we have God. talked a lot about First depression of all, and anxiety, and so now I'm going to talk about licking balls. So I just want to say before we get started <laughs> that like I feel like this is like Bridget's Corner. Like the show's changed now, and it's like, Bridget's Sexy Corner. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to drop the voice. <laughs> but she about, her I'm voice about, about to, to smooth it out. <laughs> about to, go, she's about about to, to go give low. you guys a treat. <laughs> Bridget's Sexy Corner. <laughs> How many quotes do you have? Oh, like two. But I already I have three. First of all, in this section, I had okay, a few uh, other funny ones, but how, I skipped them. Bridget, I see paragraphs over there. No, because <laughs> you can't choose like because it's it's the whole. Bridget, paragraph. did you choose three quotes, but each quote is a paragraph? Yes, I did, Johnny. Oh my god! And you're, you're out of control. <laughs> and you're welcome. <laughs> I kind of choose. They're also good. You're out of control. They're also dirty, and they're also good. I want you to know right now. I see so much of Kira in you. Are you in Kira? <laughs> Yeah, she's my kid, You're, of course. You guys are, I love you guys. I love my kid. She's the dopest. So aggressive. She's wonderful. Love her so much. Okay, guys. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Wait for it. Bridget Sexy Corner. It's time. <laughs> okay, guys. I'm going to read you all three paragraphs because you, you deserve it. But if you don't want to listen to them, you could skip forward like a minute. But then you'd be missing out on Bridget Sexy, sexy Corner. Yes, exactly. Okay. 
This one is kind of sweet, but also sexy. I'm still laughing when he falls back against the bed, dragging me with him. Even when we kiss, I'm laughing. Even as I add more lube, slicking his hole until it drips onto the sheets, I'm laughing, Mm. if a little breathlessly. But when I push the head of my cock against him and feel that slow, easy give, the laughter stops. When he takes it so fucking good with his fist shoved in his mouth and his face twisted with pleasure, oh, I'm not laughing then. And I was like, mm, 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 mm. It's nasty. Mm-hmm. It's nasty. Mm-hmm. But it was like very sweet also. Sweet and nasty. It's like sweet and nasty. Mm-hmm. Just the way I like it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Laughing while fucking. That's my favorite yes. thing. It's my favorite thing in the whole world. Laughing while fucking is, a, is so Laughing much while fun. fucking and then getting, and getting the laughter fucked out of you. Yeah. That's it. That's a, oh. that's a perfect life. Oh. <laughs> that's my perfect oh. life. Oh. Bridget, you, that, just hit, that just hit in a real way. <laughs> Shawnee squirming, you guys. Oh. I got her. Got her. <laughs> <laughs> Taking it to Pound Town. Pound Town. <laughs> I'm going to go home. Take it to Pound Town. Yes. <laughs> All right. What do you got? You don't want to read your whole uh, You want me to do my whole corner <laughs> okay, okay. before you do yours? I thought we could go back and forth. Fine, 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 fine. Maybe fine. they need a palate cleanser in between the next one. <laughs> okay, okay. okay. Well, mine are very We don't want easy. them to crash a car, you know? They, so, we don't know what they're doing. <laughs> <laughs> this one I, uh, I modified a little bit, but uh, I, I just thought this was really funny. It's when um, Olu falls down in the farm and Griffin's like, you know, trying to make sure he's okay or whatever. Mm-hmm. And he says... Uh, <laughs> he says, I fucked a doctor in med school. <laughs> and he's like, oh, so you think that that knowledge travels <laughs> from body to body through cum? <laughs> yeah, that was a good one. That was a really good and one. I just thought that was a really funny line. Yeah, and all was like, oh, fuck you. Fuck you. Shut up. <laughs> yeah, he God just goes, it. shut up. <laughs> shut up. <laughs> but you always know that you lose a fight yeah. when the only response is, that you can shut come up. up with is, shut up. <laughs> shut up. <laughs> I know you're right. Shut up. <laughs> How dare you be? How dare you be slinging logic at me? Yeah. Shut up. <laughs> okay. Mine is decidedly more dirty. Okay. Bridget Sexy Corner. This is going to be a new thing. I'm going to pick the dirtiest quote from every book forever. So we can have Bridget Sexy Corner every time. Okay. Fuck, he groans. His hips shooting forward. Fuck, Griff. I grunt around a mouthful of him and a suck harder, wetter, deeper until Oof. his next breath sounds more like a sob. Then I release his swollen shaft and lick down to his balls, grab his ass with both hands and push, lifting, spreading until I see that tight little hole. I thrust my tongue between his cheeks, pushing as deep inside him as I can. Oof. Mm. Oof. Sludge. Oof. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, Bridget. <laughs> I know. I know you like Bridget Sexy Corner. Bridget Sexy Corner. <laughs> I'm telling you, this book had a lot of deep issues, and it also had a lot of excellently written well, sex. And that's, I mean, I felt that way about, like, LJ's book, whatever, that we read. Like, the sex makes up for a whole lot. Like, when I got to the sex scenes, I was like, potato chips, you know, like, let's go. <laughs> num, 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 you know. So <laughs> we should make a reel about that when you're like listening and you're like get to a good part and you're like dun, 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 dun. the worst <laughs> the worst let me sometimes just get some sex <laughs> the worst part when you're listening sometimes is like especially because we listen for the podcast mm-hmm. is that sometimes you just got to get through it no matter what you're doing in the day the, mm-hmm. the reason I like audiobooks so much I can do something else mm-hmm. while I'm doing that and then there's like a sexy ass sex scene mm-hmm. and you start to feel all the tingles because mm-hmm. the narrator's reading something sexy to you and you're mm-hmm. like, ooh, and you're like, mm. and you're like, don't sit down because you got work to do. If you sit down, you're going <laughs> to end up staying down for a minute, you know, <laughs> but then you got the tingles while you're yeah. just trying to work. Don't lay on the couch. Don't lay, don't on, lay the on the couch. Don't lay on the couch. Don't lay on the couch. Just clean that couch. Don't lay on that couch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, yes. Uh, okay. Let me do my I feel that same one. way. Except for I'll be like around my family, and I'm like, don't you get too turned on? No. <laughs> You're on a bunch of people right there. And then That's I'm like, you know what? They can't tell what's happening. <laughs> I'm gonna do me. The other day I found like I was like, oh, I want to masturbate so bad right now, but like people were coming to visit, and you know, there's like ten minutes before someone knocks on the door. It's like the worst feeling because you squeeze it in. Always squeeze it in. I would hit a go-to and you just bang it out well, quick. See, uh, man, and I should have. Because, like, 
Once it got you can't there, have that shit in your mind for the rest of the time. I had it in my mind for the rest yeah, of the time. It's and bad. it's bad it's because crazy. I'm trying to hold a conversation with them and it looks like I'm disinterested. And it's not yeah. that I'm disinterested. It's that my brain just keeps flying over yeah. to orgasm land. Sure. And I'm at that age where um, my body is trying to get me pregnant. And when it goes to orgasm land, that's all it can fixate on. Yeah. It's it's terrible. Yeah. It's also amazing, but it's also right. terrible. Yeah. So anyway, all right, let me read my my uh, non-sexual. Okay. <laughs> you guys, do you love that I picked all the sexual ones today and Johnny picked all the non-sexual ones? I'm actually shocked because you like the feel and I actually picked the ones I feel like is the feely one. Yeah. Uh, okay. So uh, the quote is, doesn't he know no one's ever made me feel so many things at once in my whole life? Hmm. And I was like, squeeze. Oh, that's so cute. I like, yeah. I love the, the love story around them. Mm-hmm. Like, I just thought it was very sweet. I like the first time that Griffin said, I love you. And he said, I love you for the third time. My mom always said that, you know, once it was in threes, it was permanent. I was like, <laughs> 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 he's going to keep it forever. 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 Okay, you guys, this is my last one. Bridget sexy corner. Then he rises up, up up until just the tip of me is inside him and sinks down again. I don't even know who I am anymore. Suddenly, all I know is Alu. I push him back onto the bed, following until my weight sprawled over him. Then, when he's pinned beneath me, spread open around me, begging for me with every breath, I fuck him hard and deep. Mm. 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 That's a muffin with butter, maybe. Yeah. Oof. That's a nice end cap like a to bis- this episode. A biscuit. Biscuit. <laughs> a b- b- biscuit. <laughs> Pop that b- biscuit with some butter and some honey. Mm. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, I could spread some honey. Dude. In that <laughs> I mean, I know we're, I'm not sure if we're talking about sex or food anymore, but I love biscuits with honey and butter. That's my favorite thing in the world. <laughs> so good. First of all, yes. <laughs> and two, I was just thinking about all the, like, I was thinking about all the ways biscuits and honey could apply to just a sexy ass. Like, we could be fucking eating biscuits and honey. <laughs> I could put biscuits and honey on him and eat them off of him. Mm-hmm. I could just use butter and honey. Mm. You know, just so many ways. Mm-hmm. So many variations. Mm-hmm. Switch it up. Yes. Uh, <laughs> no, you could take a snack break midway through. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Dear listeners, we want to know. <laughs> I want to know because I'm nosy. Uh, would you eat uh, hot biscuits and butter and honey <laughs> while you fucking a hot ass dude? <laughs> Or maybe like just after or just in between sessions. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like you've had an orgasm, with them, you know, now you need to recover. Mm -hmm. Gather your strength for the Mm -hmm. fucking. Oh, yes. Then Mm -hmm. it is time. That's way better than eating those bag of nuts you put by the bed just so you don't crash. A bag of nuts. I don't have a bag of nuts. I did when I was pregnant, actually. And when I was breastfeeding, dude, I was eating fucking trail mix like it was my goddamn job. (laughs) could not eat enough food. Well, you know, like when you're going to, you know, you're going to have like a sex marathon. Then you put like some snacks next to the bed. I don't think that far ahead. I get a towel. Oh. (laughs) You always got to have a towel if you're going to have a sex marathon. And that's about it. That's about as far. That's about as far as my mind gets. At the beginning, I mean, later, obviously, we venture for water. We venture for things. But like at the beginning, I don't think to myself, like, let me prep my nightstand. Never. (laughs) It's never something I've ever thought. I'm just like. Let's keep going till we die. <laughs> I'm like, I need a snack. Let's keep going. <laughs> I want to keep going. I need a snack. I need a snack. Hold on a second. Hold on. Mid thrust. Hold on a second. I got to eat this granola bar. Do you really? <laughs> well, Do you really mid thrust granola bar? Because uh, that would be amazing. <laughs> it has happened. That's just a time or two. That's so funny. <laughs> well, in general, I I'm like. I'm taking some sips of water, though. Well, like. Because you get parched, you know? You do get so parched. Like, what if you're, like, giving head or something and you get parched? And you get to, like, wait, you know what? My night stands right there. Let me just lean over real fast and get some water. <laughs> yeah. First of all, especially, you get parched. If your partner's really pre cummy you get a lot of pre cum situation. You got to, you need a little get a water. Rinse. You get a rinse. Yeah. yeah. And then, like, three, it's always fun to put cold water in your mouth <gasps> when you're doing the blowjob. Oh, it's so nice. feels nice for them, too, but it yes. feels so nice for you. It's kind of like a menthol yes. situation. Get yes. some nice refreshment. Yes. You know what I'm saying? It's yes. good for everybody. Stay hydrated, my Stay friends. Stay hydrated. <laughs> Stay hydrated during your blowjobs. This is a PSA from Romance at a Glance. You're welcome. You're welcome. Tell your tell your parents. Tell your mom. <laughs> what is your favorite review? Uh, my favorite review is well. First off, I like. I want to say that I like that Talia. Oh, wrote, I put that down too. Did you? Yeah. I was like, I mean, I I picked a different review too, but I thought hers was cute. I did. So I uh I just put her, a piece of hers here, which is 
Uh, basically, two dudes have some issues, want to bang, dislike each other, and decide they don't want to bang, accidentally like each other again, and then they bang. Then they remember they still don't. Then they remember they still didn't fix the issues. Then someone. Then some stuff goes sideways. Also, there is Lizzie from Undone by the Ex-Con <laughs> or whatever, which is like a, another book. Um, and I just liked her little synopsis of it. She also made like this mention. She's like, I'm good at writing books, but not internet-y stuff, which I thought was funny and a very like yeah. human author thing, you know, to write. I think it's funny that I picked a different part of what she wrote, which was, I'm reading this right now because it's literally my book. And unfortunately, I have to edit it. And wow, it bangs. Well done me. Cracking effort. <laughs> it's like, that's so fucking cute. Yeah, and I, British. I, it, <laughs> Cracking effort. <laughs> I thought that was really awesome. Um <clears throat> Yeah. yeah, when we one day in the future are writing books and novellas, I we will a hundred percent be reviewing our own books with these funny <laughs> little quips at the beginning. Good Which for is, us. High five. High five. <laughs> Which is funny because she told us that she doesn't read the reviews. Yeah. So I'm wondering when she wrote that. If she ever did read any, she probably of the just reviews. wrote it as soon as she like published Pro- it. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Uh, but it was that's very. Uh, or actually, you know what she probably did because you can list your book on Goodreads ahead of time. So she said, "I'm editing it." So she probably posted it. Oh, as she was doing her last read through. While she was still editing, the book hadn't come out yet. Yeah. But yeah, she said she doesn't read any of her reviews, which frankly, I don't know that I would either. I, w- I, don't, I don't think I, I would. would care. Like, I, I just want more people to, re- like, reviews are for readers. Yeah. Hi, dear listeners. This is for you. This is not for the author. Yeah. Which They like, already wrote the book. We want to we wanna tell you whether or not you should read it. <laughs> I feel like I got, like, one bad YouTube review one time, and I was like, can't do it. <laughs> Too sensitive. We got a we got a not that nice YouTube review for this channel. Oh, we did, but I loved that one. Like yeah. I, I took a screenshot and I yeah, saved it did. and I framed it because I was you like, did. I was like, we made it, we made it. But Shani called me, we made it, and I was like, what do you mean? She's like, an author got mad at us on YouTube. And I was like, All right. and I will frame said review. It was I, I sent her a lovely ish message back, um, but it was definitely interesting because. She wrote like I hardly I don't ever reply to these messages. And I was like, so, well, today's your day, I guess. <laughs> We're <in> lucky. <laughs> yeah, I'm like today's our day because you yeah. picked us. And I was like, it's like her getting mad at our review is not a for me. It's not a good look for her. Like for other viewers to come and yeah. see the author go off on our in our comments. Yeah, I feel like it's just not a good look for her. Yeah, I agree. But, but it was also but oh, it made me think of Talia though the other day because. When we were talking to her on the interview, she was like, um, it's very hard for her to think of herself as an author, mm-hmm. right? And this author who went off on us was like, like basically, like, how dare you go off of on us? Yeah, I'm just like a mom who, of three who writes to keep people happy. But her book was contracted by Audible, right? So they paid her to right. make that book specifically for them. Right. At that point, you're not just a mom writing fan fiction. You are an author. Yeah, you're, you're paid for your work. Paid, you have a published, published author, yeah. and now you're up for review and critique yeah. and whatever. Yeah. Um, so it's interesting because I feel like people don't necessarily consider themselves like an author or whatever. Yeah. Uh, because the the line blurs at some point. You're like, oh, writing for fun, 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 yeah. fun. Now getting paid. Yeah. And like, oh, I still feel like. Or I'm you think of an author as being like. Julia Quinn is an author. Yeah. Like and a- you're like, well, yeah, she is. And she's been doing it for 30 years and she's amazing and her 25 years. And she's, you know, obviously one of the best for a reason. But that doesn't mean if you've written two books or one book, you're not an author. Exactly. It just means you haven't <laughs> written 30 yet. You just don't have a backlog like yeah. that yet, you know. So it was definitely an interesting thing to think about uh, when she was saying like, oh, I have to tell myself and remember, I... I'm an author, Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know? Um, So that was very interesting. Uh, So this is the one I picked from the, from a reader. And the thing about it is there was a couple that I liked, but let me, I'm just going to do this one. Here we go. My problem was the storyline. I found it boring and it ended up skimming a bit. That's my signal to give up. It's weird because the writing is good. It shows instead of telling, which is something I am picky about. Besides the characters have a lot of personality, another positive thing. However, sometimes this is not enough. The storyline didn't grab me. As a result, I felt totally disconnected, pointless to carry on. And that's kind of how I felt. Like if I had not been reading for this for the podcast after about chapter two or three, I would have DNF'd. Makes sense because they're the worst two or three chapters of the whole book. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I chose Valerie's review. 
And she said it was a perfect cinnamon roll ra- romance. Griff and Alu consumed me from the first page. Not true because I didn't like the first chapter, but uh, Talia Hubbard's writing is absolutely brilliant. She takes two broken and neglected hearts that have been struggling in the shade and brings them into the sun. The romance that blooms is sweet and sassy and sexy. And these beautiful men find H-E-A. And I was like, yeah. Except for the first page comment. I agree. I gave it four stars. You'll be surprised to find. <laughs> Not five stars. I, I, so you guys, I got approved for an advanced reader copy of Act Your Age, Eve Brown. And if you have not read the Eve Brown sisters, do yourself a favor. They are amazing. I really like them. I love that book so much. So if you're thinking about pre-ordering, you should absolutely do so because it's awesome. I'm going to read I will all. say that this book was not as good as those books, um, but I still thought it was really good. And I did think you do have to be, to Shawnee's point, in the mood for this type of romance. Um, but as you heard from Bridget's Sexy Corner, it is very sexy in the sexy parts. Very it sexy. is very sweet and also very kind of like sad and 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 slow because they're slowly like figuring their own shit out, which is actually kind of nice because I think sometimes people do a disservice to characters who have depression or anxiety and they're like, oh, they found someone and they're in love and everything is fine now. And they like don't even need meds or they're never going to be unhappy again, which is usually not the case for people who have anxiety or depression. It's not like it just insta love goes away. Unfortunately, that would be nice. Um, So I liked that it was handled with a realism, but I think that also maybe couldn't be not for some reason. But I also think that could be not for some readers, but I really enjoyed it. Yeah. And gave it four stars. So I was basically like at a 2.53. So I gave it a three because I was like whelmed. Uh, <laughs> the sex scenes for me, I mean, they really brought the book up a star. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was going to, I was like, Talia writes great sex. Let she me does. tell you. She does. And I'm definitely going to read the Brown sisters. I actually am pretty in love with her writing. Um, mm-hmm. I liked, I liked how the book was written, even though I did not like this book, mm. you know? Um, so I have, a. Uh, kind of a better hope and expectation for the Brown sisters. I think sisters. you're going to like books one and three better than book two. Um, read them all. I think you should read them all. I Only because book two does, one of the characters has pretty severe anxiety. Gotcha. Which is a factor in the story. Oh, okay. But I still think you'll like it. It's like, I want to, you know, and obviously it's up to the author, but like, I want the character to have whatever they have. So anxiety or depression, whatever it's going to be. Um, I guess I don't want to live constantly in the book, mm-hmm. in the mind of anxiety and depression, because in general, I just feel like I have anxiety. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, that's probably another reason why I like this book yeah. better is because I have significantly less depression and anxiety than you do. Yeah. I feel like I'm more anxious now, just like everyone else on the planet because of COVID and all the other crazy the election in the United States is fucking, oh, wait, it's over now. Well, at this time that we're recording, it is not over yet, and it is fucking bonkers, bonkers. here. <laughs> and yeah, so the anxiety has really come at me this year compared to normal. But I, in general, I don't have depression and anxiety as like a general rule. Yeah. So I feel like that's also part of why it was more almost like interesting and like almost helpful kind of to like be in it and like see it. And I could like appreciate the slow emergence versus being like, Ooh, I felt like this. I don't want to be in this space. Yeah. I think that's kind of like part of it for me was just like, Ooh, too it, close to home, too close to home, too close. This hits close <laughs> to home. Uh, this year has been beautifully tough. Um, yes. and a lot of growth. A lot of growth. A lot of this growth year. over that, here, at Romance yeah. Life. <laughs> a lot of growth. I'm not mad at it, but oof. It's a lot you of know, growth. muscles are sore. Yeah. <laughs> We're working hard. Uh, We're growing. Yeah, you know. So I don't necessarily want to like knock this book and be like, yo, it's it's bad because I feel like I had a kind of weird, quirky experience with this book. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. I feel like I feel like headspace wise, not in the headspace for this book. Mm-hmm. Um, to narrator. Yeah. Please do not 
listen to this narrator. Don't listen. Read the book. <laughs> read the actual book for this because it would be helpful if you get to set his uh, Olu's own tone. Mm-hmm. Um, so he doesn't sound like Jafar. Yeah, he um, didn't sound like Jafar to me. He yeah, just sounded like a posh British boy to me. Yeah, he sounded just or like British he man, like I guess. Jaf- That's Sorry. actually it. He sounded like Jafar. Jafar. <laughs> He always yeah, that like would have changed the story scheming. quite a bit if he was scheming. Yeah, Olu's not supposed to be scheming ever in this yeah. book. He's just supposed to be sad <laughs> and hiding the fact that he is sad yeah. and anxious. So it, it definitely changes what it is. So I'll give the book a, a three. Um, and just with the caveat that, like, read it if you're cool with that. If, you're, if you are, are in an anxious place and you're not in the mood for a heavy read, don't read it. Cause you're going to rate it poorly mm-hmm. because just because it's just not the book for the moment, give right. it wait till you're happier and then let it depress you. Yeah. <laughs> but then give you a sweet little love tap at the end <laughs> and some hot fucking ass sex scenes. Hot sex. Yes. I support that. And yeah. I want to know, Oh, in the, in the Brown we sisters. We didn't even talk about this yet. Okay. Let what? me just, well, we kind of glazed on it, but before we wrap up, I do want to say, that I really appreciated that they did not go straight from kissing to fucking in the ass. Oh, yeah. Because as we know, you need some time to, to warm work up. that <laughs> out first. And I appreciated that she described that they used lube. Mm-hmm. And first there was one finger, and then there were two fingers, and then there were three fingers, and then there was a penis. Yes. And it was not a quick process. Nope. It was a process. They yeah. were working it out. Slow and steady. Slow and steady. Mm-hmm. And then they were fucking it hard. Yep. Which is fine. Mm-hmm. But they did not just fucking hard raw dog off the bat. Like no bug, <laughs> Quinn and Saxon. They're only surviving because they're vampires. <laughs> they're not Quinn and Saxon. Blay and Saxon. And they're only surviving because they're vampires. Like, yeah. No, we're not raw dogging shit here. Yeah. Like, And they used condoms. Yeah. And they, they, you know, worked it out. I always feel like, and this may just be me, but if I did not have to worry about pregnancy... And I started to like someone, and we were having sex. I'd be like, let's quick get our STD test so we can fuck without a condom because there's no chance of getting a baby up in this. <laughs> like, that's just me. But that yeah. immediately would be my thing. I'd be like, you can't get me pregnant. I can't get pregnant at all because in this scenario, I'm a man. So let's get an <laughs> STD test and let's go in with our right time. Honestly, I like that because at the end when they were like, you know, Hey, are you clean? We don't have a condom. What's yeah. the, you know, whatever. And I was just like, oh, the idea of just being able to fuck without getting pregnant, man, is like. It's a dream. It's a dream come true. Like, yeah. you I've know. I've only had it two times in my whole life. And both times were great. <laughs> and both times we were a baby. No, well, <laughs> actually, yes, that is true. But no, my husband has a vasectomy. So now it's great because we don't have to worry about that anymore. And Although sometimes so he makes cracks you. about it, like reversing. And I'm like, don't you put that juju on us. <laughs> and then. Also, I dated a guy who, I mean, it's like not like a happy story it is because he survived, but he had testicular cancer. And so he was sterile. Yeah. And I mean, you should have heard the conversation. I was like, what is the percentage chance that they gave you that you could ever have a father or child? And like, he was like zero. And I was like, no, no, no. I want to know the, did they say it was 0.01? Was there a percentage? (laughs) And he was like, no, they said it was zero. And I was like, I would like to see your records. (laughs) And as soon as I do, then we do not have to use any condoms. And it was nice. It was lovely. <laughs> I mean, it was, I have to say, it was very nice to not have to be on birth control and not have to use condoms yeah. and not be able to get pregnant. See, that's, that's fucking lovely. It was actually quite great. I mean, if there weren't so many of these things in life, I mean, I would be a hoe of the biggest order. Yeah, if there I'd were no the STDs, I would be, I'd be a proud hoe, flag waving Oh, so many more penises in my life. So many more penises. I mean, big there one, have small been ones. There, have been a, head. there have been a lot. I'm an equal opportunity lover, mm. and I did taste the rainbow. <laughs> but there were many that Treat I turned yourself. down because I was like, mm, "You look just sketchy enough to have an STD." <laughs> <laughs> I've turned them down for being too large. I have been like, mm, "Can't come back from that." No. I'm tiny. See, I would like people to yeah. understand. You don't always need a big tick. I am very tiny inside. My canal is short. Okay, my back wall is very close to the front wall. I don't need a whole lot. I just need a nice average size. What's a husband size? Penis? Husband size penis. Very average size penis. Nothing too large. Nothing I, where I gotta breathe and do yoga to to make that shit work. I'm just saying. <laughs> I have never had sex with anyone with a larger than like maybe like nine inches is probably the biggest one. That's huge. <laughs> and I was down to clown. I was down to fucking clown, Johnny. I loved it. 
at one point while we were banging, this is a funny story. So at one point while we were banging, he asked me, he's like, are you done? And I was like, so out of my mind. And I was like, I don't understand the question. And he just like laughed at me and he's like, oh, you're never going to be done. And I was like, done with what? Why would we be done? What's happening? <laughs> Who am I? I was like, I don't want to be done. This feels amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he had a yummy penis. Yeah. I do like the yummy ones. Mm-hmm. 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 I would not want to like give him head all the time though. No. You know what I mean? Well, because you don't want to, I mean, you would use two, you'd have to use like two hands and just do yeah. the tip. You know what I mean? But yeah. like, I wouldn't want to like, it's just a lot. You couldn't do the whole like throat situation. Oh, God, on no. The thing I would whatever. fucking vomit. Yeah. <laughs> if yeah. I have a very aggressive gag reflex. Yeah. <laughs> so if someone tries to stick nine inches in my mouth, that yeah. would have a nine inch I So, so, <laughs> that so, would literally vomit. So this there's is, no way. I had to ask my mom, okay, what to do with a large penis. And my mom is a very conservative Christian woman. When I said, mom, I have a sex question. She's like, no, don't ask me no sex questions. You have aunties and other people. And I said, mom, who's going to give me the best advice? You are. You're my mom. And so I was like, I'm going to ask you anyways. So very uncomfortably, I asked her, mom, what do you do when someone has a penis that is just too large for you to like, like how do you have sex? Sit on or to put uh, in your mouth? To to sit okay. on, to put in your mouth, okay. to do anything with. It's just the largest shit. Okay. And she, she says very calmly, she goes, well, some men just don't get to put the whole thing in. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, ever? Like, <laughs> poor man. She was like, well, did you ever see um, Magic Mike 2? No. So in it, Joe Man, Man Gian, Gianello, or however you say his last name, mm-hmm. his character is called Big Dick Rick. So he has an <laughs> enormous penis. And he never has found anyone who could fit it all in. And then they go and they end up stopping at this this house and blah, blah, blah. It's like one event leads to another. But um, there's some mom there with their like, you know, 20 somethings daughter. So the moms are in their 40s. And he has sex with one of the women. And she in the morning they go, so? And he's like. They're like, the whole thing? And they're like, nice, man. And it's like the first time he's ever had anyone fit his old dick in. I love how it had to be somebody who's delivered a baby. I was just thinking that. I was like, yeah, of course. Like She had a baby come out. She could probably fit a penis. Yeah. Bridget. Yeah. It's the end of the episode. It's the end of the episode. We talked it out. Let's do it. May your books be your lover. And you'll hand your best friend. See you next time, friends. Thanks for listening. Subscribe to our channel to get new episodes, clips, and more. And click here to watch our previous reviews and author interviews. 